Hi, I thought I'd give a quick update on the Retromatic 2000. Um, just a quick summary if you haven't seen it before. Uh, this is the Retromatic 2000. I built it for the Retro Challenge in spring 2017. Um, and it's for interfacing old computers with modern equipment. And it's got two sides to it. This side um, does video processing to allow you to connect um, to a VGA flat screen monitor. Um, it takes progressive um, output from old machines and successfully converts it. So here you see Amstrad RGB output coming out on the uh, monitor. And the other half over here is a floppy drive emulator from USB. And there's all the inside gubbins that uses a video processing board, um, a floppy drive emulator, and some glue logic here with an Arduino that controls the two of them. Um, so that was what I built um, in 2017. In the Vector Challenge in spring 2018, I revisited it because um, I was doing some work on an Osborne portable computer and I needed to do, use the floppy drive emulator. Um, and there were some teething problems with that because I had some uh, some issues with the whole machine and I did some repairs back then, um, which I'll talk about in a bit. Um, and then um, there were still some issues. I put them aside and I came back to them recently because I unpacked all my computers to put them in a display cabinet and got out this Texas Instruments TI-994A and wanted to get that working with the video output. Um, the Texas is unusual in that it has component video output. It doesn't have composite, it doesn't have RGB. All it has is RF and component. Um, luckily, the video board that I use in the Retromatic uh, has uh, the option for component input. So I bought myself a component video lead and um, the last couple of days I've been trying to get this all working. Um, the short um, answer to all this, uh, if you don't want to watch a long video, is I have got it mostly working. So here we can change to YUV mode, aka component, and uh, I'll just have to turn the Texas off and on again because it goes into some kind of standby mode. And there we go, and we have a nice colour, quite crisp, uh, in fact very crisp, probably crisper than it's ever been before, um, uh, video output. Um, the Retromatic also up the option to put on scan lines um, because computers of the day only output every other uh, line of the TV. Uh, so you can turn that on and off. It's obviously brighter if you do the line doubling. And you can see the same uh, if I put it back to RGB and the Amstrad. We can put the scan lines on. Can we see that? Yep, or scan lines off. Um, so that's uh, basically, it's more or less working. There's um, a couple of slight um, teething problems. You may see it's it's cutting off very slightly off the left-hand edge of the screen there. Um, the colours aren't perfect, but they're as close as I can get. I've done quite a bit of tweaking. And if you watch this long enough, we'll see if it does it. Occasionally the vertical sync goes off and you just get a little bit of judder. He's not going to do it now. Um, so I might be able to live with that. I might be able to see if I can do something about it. All right, so that uh, kind of shows the state of play. Oh, the reason I was, the other reason I was doing all this, um, oh, you just missed a judder there. Um, the other reason is I'm exhibiting at the Derby Maker Fair in a few weeks' time, and this is one of the things I'm going to be showing. And there was a vertical sink uh, jitter. Um, so I wanted to get everything up and working. So that's how it all is now, and I'll go into a little bit of detail about all the various repairs I've done. So um, when I'd left it at the end of the 2017 Retro Challenge, um, I it was in a slightly poorly state because I've got an Arduino Nano in here, and foolishly I drilled this hole on the back while the Arduino was still there, and I put a drill through the um, serial chip so the USB programming interface didn't work any longer. So I got myself a new um, new nano board and programmed it and put it in there. Um, and at that point, all the disk stuff worked, but the video output didn't. And it looked like it was possibly a sync issue because the picture just rolled. And I've eventually managed to track this down in the last couple of days. It all came down to this little cable here, this um, uh, grey and orange cable. 
and I've got it on back to front. Well, what this is, is on this board, I've built a sink um, stripper circuit that means you can take a composite video signal and it will strip out just the sink from the composite, which is like video and sync, um, which is what you need to feed into this frame buffer board. So it needs a pure sync, otherwise you get interference. Um, so the circuit is on there, and those two wires are the input and the output um, to the sync stripper. So basically I'd got the, the wrong way round, so the sync wasn't coming out and going to the frame buffer board, which is why the picture was rolling. So that's a relief that, I've, that that was the only thing wrong. Um, because I this is my second frame buffer board because the first one um, became faulty, possibly due to some of the mods I'd done, I don't know. So I had to get a second one, so I was uh, fearful that that had broken, but thankfully not. Um, I then set about um, getting the um, component, also known as YUV uh, or YCBCR um, or Y. PBPR working. Um, so this board has got um, uh, several inputs. It's got the side phono input and it's got a couple of inputs on the board. The inputs on the board are used for the RGB, which comes from SCART on the outside here. Um, so I needed to switch over to these. I also needed to tell the chip um, that I was using um, YUV and not RGB and various other things like that. Uh, as a little digression, how this board works, it's an off-the-shelf board, it's got a video processing chip and it's also got a computer chip which sets all the parameters on the processing chip. Um, but they are not perfect for the pseudo-progressive signal you get off an 8-bit computer. Um, so what I do is we put a jumper on the programming header to deactivate the onboard chip and then use the uh, I squared C serial line on here to squirt the parameters directly into the processing board. And that's what the Arduino does. And I've built on work that um, a few other people have done to do that. Um, and um, they got a whole load of registers, a uh, list of the registers you need to program these boards, uh, which I've got over in my software here. So here we've got um, uh, my Arduino software that does all the processing for the Retromatic. And I've got one set of registers here for RGB. And what I did was I went back to the source of where I got those, which is Duke Link GBS Control. And he had done some component things. So I took these registers and put these in here um, as a um, uh, YUV parameter and use those instead. Um, sadly, that was having nothing doing and I wasn't getting anything out of here. Um, I did try the going back to the onboard built onboard software of the frame buffer board. So that's got menus and so on. So I disconnected the Arduino, put it back um, into the onboard computer and selected the side input and it correctly identified it as component and displayed. Not a perfect, but it got a Texas um, Instruments screen on there. So I knew the board was capable of doing that but I couldn't figure out why these parameters weren't working. And I did a lot of investigation in the manual. So I've got, um, uh, I've got the manuals for these. Where's the case gone? So for the, this is for the um, uh, video processing chip on the frame buffer board. So we've got um, a reference manual and we've got a programming manual. And I delved into these loads. I also looked, there's a new um, new project on the go. Here it is, uh, Rama PC SX2 has got a version of GBS control, um, which looked very interesting. He's got done a lot of really good work. Um, and so I did have a look at trying to use some of this. Um, he's written for the ESP8266 board, um, which is a Wi-Fi uh, board, um, and also an Arduino version. Sadly, the Arduino version needs too much memory to fit on my Arduino Nano, so I wasn't able to um, actually try this out. Um, I tried looking through some of the um, some of the register settings he's got here. Um, but I couldn't find anything that was helpful, but that's definitely worth a look. If you're starting from scratch on this, definitely go to this project that looks uh, like a very good project that's up and coming. 
Um, so um, I was a little bit stuck. Um, but given that over here the um, that I could get the onboard software to um, to successfully read this input, um, I went back to um, that board and I, I wrote some software that could dump the registers on the video processing chip and got the onboard software to read the input then I deactivated it with the power still on plugged in my Arduino and then dumped all the registers and then I got all those registers and put it into this spreadsheet. So here are all the ones I dumped from the onboard chip. And I used conditional formatting in Excel to compare um, these to um, the uh, what I was using and see what was different. And then delve through these manuals to work out um, what those actually do and try and work out what was um, what was going on. And that meant that over here I was able to finally come up with um, a whole load of registers that are necessary to um, get this working. So um, probably the key one is switch over to the different input. Um, then you've got to set up it into YUV mode. Um, but in order to get the sync to work, you have to modify the sync level and the sync on green clamping registers. Um, so the component uses a sync signal on the green um, uh, input, uh, which is technically, it's kind of, it's, um, uh, it's luminance and green, and then the other two are the differences are for the blue and the red. Um, so those are necessary to get a steady picture. Um, then to get the colours right, you had to do um, colour clamping um, to tell it where the kind of neutral point is on the video signal. Um, and then I still found the colours were rather off compared with what the text instruments should be. The black was um, with blue, <coughs> the reds were really muddy. I did find by these registers for red, green, blue gain, I... I played around with a lot, wrote some menus for changing them, and I found that boosting them a little bit from, they were the midpoint of 127, boosted them all a little bit, made better saturated colours. Um, I also found in the programming guide, because uh, YUV has a um, different um, um, a mathematical, the each, uh, each pin has red, green and blue in different proportions and so they gave a guide to how you use that formula to give a gain and an offset for all the YUV on the input. Um, so the onboard controller didn't seem to be doing this I've, but I've added these in. Um, I haven't noticed a huge difference but I thought it was worth doing it by the book. So essentially I've put all of these in into the code, I've put them back into, into this video array um, and that gives you the result over here. The text has gone back to sleep, I think. There we go. Um, so uh, all in all, that's um, yeah, pretty successful. I also did a bit of um, cosmetic work on the case of the Retromatic. These displays kept falling off. I had had them uh, stuck in with hot glue, but they had fallen off when I came back to them in the spring. I then re-glued them twice on the same day, um, and I thought they were working, but then they fell off a couple of days later. So I've now screwed them in, or put bolts through. Uh, it's a bit old school, but it kind of fits the aesthetic. Um, uh, of the uh, of the um, whole thing and the only other thing is ah, oh, it seems to be okay at the moment I was having a vertical stripe down the the picture on the um, have we got it here no it seems to be missing now and I wasn't sure whether that was coming from the video conversion board or whether it was a fault on this ancient monitor that I've got here um, but that might need investigating so still to do, of um, do a bit better menus here for connecting because I've got just left and right for scan lines and click to switch mode. So it really needs some um, slight improvement there. Um, it'd be good to get um, to the bottom of this jitter 
Um, uh, there's also, as I say, it was cutting the edge off here, and there's this, this kind of blue line at the bottom, uh, which was more pronounced on the inbuilt settings from the, the video chip. Uh, video controller there. Um, my settings are slightly better so I know which registers are changed from that because there's a whole lot of registers for the horizontal and vertical syncing and clipping and stuff and I don't really understand uh, exactly what they all do so that would be good to investigate them see if I can get the um, uh, get the picture alignment just right and it'd be really good if I get to the bottom of this jitter uh, sadly I'm not quite sure where to start on that and probably needs maybe needs an oscilloscope to look at where that's coming in um, and maybe quite a bit more knowledge than I currently have but still we're doing quite well and I've got something um, that I can display quite well at the Maker Faire in a few weeks time I'll probably take both the Texas and the Amstrad along to do that uh, I've got a lot of other projects to shelf as well, so whether I'll fit them all on my table, I don't know. But there you go, that's a little update on Wearback Retromatic 2000 in September uh, 2018.